great economy, not only in immediate cost, but over the long pull. Because, as you know, nothing lasts longer than steel. This is a conveyor pipe through which grain will be transported by auger from the storage building to the elevator. It's over 400 feet long. This building and its design are a fine example of the craftsmanship and skill of Northwest Steel. Whatever your building problems, you will find a handsome economical answer in steel at Northwest Steel. Quaker Oats Company, world's largest cereal company, runs its country elevators from this office in the Warden Building. The man in charge is Harold Cole. There are 41 of these elevators in Iowa, several others in South Dakota, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, and Mississippi. They buy grain and sell feed, full of pep feed, and they make deliveries in bulk as well as in the sack right to the farm. This is a Quaker Oats elevator. It's in the town of Beaver on Highway 30, about eight miles west of Arctic. The manager is Jim Higg. Jim not only manages the elevator, but he also runs the lumber yard. This is a 205,000 bushel elevator. From here, trucks with a grinding mill on them serve the farms of this rich farming community for miles around. The bulk delivery system to bulk storage makes the farmer's feed about $5 a ton cheaper. With Jim is the assistant manager at Beaver, Roger Tolsdorf. Not only does Jim Higgs run the lumber yard as a part of the Quaker Oats plant at Beaver, but he and his men build feeders. The plans we're looking at are for the Lee feeder. This feeder will feed 100 head of hogs or 80 head of cattle. It's built right here in the yard and sells for about $265. Oh, let's take a look inside the feeder, Jim, and see what it's like in there. This is the inside of the feeder. You can see how smooth its sides are and how well it's built. Jim delivers these right to the farm, and he's sold a, a lot of them. Feed comes in by rail. Higgs and I are standing in one of the cars. This is a big operation, and the supply of feed to the farms is just as important as the purchasing of grain. Full of Pep is the Quaker Oats brand name for its feeds. Every different kind of Full of Pep feed is the result of years of laboratory work and farm uh, testing. This Quaker Oats elevator is a monolithic poured concrete tower 135 feet high. Winds love to play around an elevator. In the day we were there, the winds were having a ball. When you go up to the top of this elevator, you ride in a very small cage, only big enough for two. The view, as you can see, of the Iowa farmland is beautiful. No railing around the elevator's top, and on a windy day, just standing there so far above the ground can give all the thrills of mountain climbing. Quaker Oats elevators cover the cash grain areas of Iowa and Illinois and other Midwestern markets. This is the Quaker Oats operation at Emmitsburg. In addition to the facilities found at Beaver, it has a grain dryer. Clem Melder is the manager, and the newest of the Quaker Oats elevators here is another monolithic poured concrete giant of the same size as the one at Beaver. 205,000 bushels it holds, and it rises into the sky 135 feet. Forty people work in the central offices of Quaker Oats in Fort Dodge, and over 200 in the country elevators. In the feed division, there are 35 people in sales. The Fullapap Feed Division of Quaker Oats for this area includes all our parts of 10 states, all of Iowa, Wisconsin, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. While outdoor advertising is worldwide, it is basically an American institution and an earmark of our way of life. During World War II, when our young men were flung to the far corners of the globe by the all-out struggle, they clamored for commercials to be included on Armed Forces radio programs. Returning GIs said that billboards were a welcome sight, for they meant unmistakably home. In Fort Dodge, we have located one of the nation's newest and most extensively equipped outdoor advertising plants. The Combs Outdoor Advertising Operation serves Fort Dodge and its trade territory. The outdoor advertising industry is basically concerned with two types of signs. There are standard specifications for both 
One is the painted display unit or bulletin, especially designed and individually painted. The other is the poster panel on which is mounted a design printed by lithography or screen processes on paper. The Combs Company receives a sign from an advertiser and it consists of a number of sheets of paper in a single bundle. The heavy paper is more easily handled if it's soaked, which makes it more flexible and less likely to tear. In preparation for posting, the bill poster simply gives his 24 sheet a soaking or a bath. A posting crew at work mounts signs on one of the most modern poster panels anywhere. An all steel structure on the edge of the Fort Dodge Business District in a location where passing auto traffic is some of the city's heaviest. Posting the top panel requires a different technique and separate equipment from that used on the ground panel. A pair of bill posters mounts the top panel, working from the catwalk and using long handled brushes. Quickly an artistic design with a brief message from the advertiser forms as the men piece together the various paper segments and solve the paper puzzle that originated in the mind of another far from their signboard. The message is contained in the 24 sheet space, measuring nine feet high by 20 feet long, surrounded by a white border, making the entire poster panel actually 30 sheets in size. Mounting the poster on the lower panel or ground unit requires entirely different equipment and technique. The bill poster suspends hanging ladders from the catwalk and sets up his own scaffold. Where a commercial message is posted above by his co-workers, he posts a message in behalf of retarded children, one of the many non-profit public service causes to which the industry contributes its facilities and efforts without charge. Robert Combs, who heads the firm and its Fort Dodge operation, estimates that last year his company contributed more than 2,500 poster months to worthy causes in Iowa. The superstructure on which a pair of posters is mounted illustrates the sturdy construction which enables the installation to withstand the most severe storms and weather buffeting. The population of the Fort Dodge area and its business potential is such that the Combs operation finds it necessary to keep upwards of 300 poster panels in service. Among the installations here are constant postings for public service causes, such as highway hypnosis, back the attack, and fallout. These posting efforts by the Combs Advertising Company make up one of the more important national industries which have key representation in Fort Dodge. Everywhere in the world, men who know tires know the Coates Tireman. The Coates Company is a partnership founded by GE Coates, started out in farm machinery, but switched to become the largest company in the world in tire changers. With Mr. Coates are these men, Jim Semprini, general manager, Jim Foster, chief engineer, Bill Van Dries, special sales representative, and Ted Semprini, purchasing agent. Charles Knutson, dictating to his secretary, Mrs. Robert Buckles, is assistant general manager. The Coates Tireman is manufactured in a modern plant east of Fort Dodge on Highway 20 under ideal working conditions. The lighting is good. The air is changed continually, kept fresh and free from all of the smoke and odors ordinarily associated with machine plants. The Royal Horton is the plant superintendent. Other skilled machinists and welders seen working here in the Coates Tireman plant are Norman Kaiser, John Scott, and Ralph Peterson. Others are Carl Borchardt and George Brown. The idea for the Coates Tireman grew out of the need the company had for mounting tires easily on a fifth wheel farm trailer. Now the company makes four different tire changers and as new tires and new sizes come on the market, new Coates tiremen are needed and of course are invented. The tireman is the best device ever developed for taking a tire off the rim and putting it back on. It is standard equipment in garage and service stations everywhere. In its more advanced designs, the Coates Tireman is operated by air pressure. For truck tubeless tires, it's motorized. 
The tool kit includes a tire spreader, tool rack, band lifter, tube buffing stand, and wheel balancer. In the United States, sales are handled by Jack P. Hennessy with offices in New Jersey, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Phil Van Driest is exclusive sales representative in Iowa and Wisconsin. In Canada, sales are handled by Bear Equipment and Service Company of Toronto. Henry R. John and son handle all European sales. Coach Tyerman now has a company in Australia and is putting in plants in Mexico and in Italy. Coates makes a wheel balancing machine that's foolproof, simple, and inexpensive. It works on the principle of a carpenter's level. You put the wheel on the level, and when the wheel is in balance, the bubble in the level comes to the exact center of this device. Now this level, invented by Coates, is now being used by thousands of service stations all over the country. Another uh, Coates invention is the Coates tire mounting band. This is used on tubeless tires to bring the beads against the rim. Without this Coates tire tool, tubeless tires are difficult to inflate. This Coates tire spreader is one that you see in use as you stand by while your serviceman does an inspection to see what flattened your tire. Everywhere in the world, Wherever men know tires, they know Coates and the Coates family of tire tools. It's the big red check mark in all over Northwest Iowa. It means Rosedale's quality check dairy products. Rosedale's president and general manager is Al Loomis, the son and grandson of the men who started Rosedale 50 years ago. Rosedale quality starts with milk on the farm. This is Bill Secor, outstanding dairyman. This tank is made of stainless steel. The milk cools here and is agitated automatically as it cools. It flows through a plastic hose with stainless steel fittings into Rosedale's stainless steel tank on the milk truck. Art Sendlinger coils the plastic hose and makes ready for his next stop. The farms that supply Rosedale milk are the best dairy farms in the they're owned and operated by outstanding dairymen like Bill Secor. The dairy herds are quality checked, government inspected. They use only the finest steel equipment, kept laboratory clean. When you buy Rosedale dairy products, you can be sure of their quality. You can taste the freshness, the goodness in them. This is Rosedale's modern sanitary plant. Ice cream cartons are being filled. Howard McDonald, foreman of Rosedale's ice cream department, stacks the empty cartons, and they're filled automatically as they move along. Finally, the machine closes them. Then they come to Marie Phillips and Mary Fairbanks, who put them into sacks. Rosedale makes Eskimo pies for all of Iowa and parts of Missouri and Nebraska. Here's how the pies look as they begin to be Eskimo pies. By conveyor belt, they go into a chilling tunnel much colder than the coldest Iowa day. In there, it's 50 below zero. Paul Daly watches over them, and a little hammer automatically wraps each tray to break them loose because they're frozen tight. Here, they're going into an Italian wrapping machine to get a coating of foil. Rosedale's Eskimo pies come in a take-home package, 12 to the box, and in an institutional package. Now here Norman Lemke is shown stacking flat half-pint cartons into the bottling machine. The flats enter the machine to become cartons. 5,000 moving fingers make the carton, each one under a pressure of 2,500 pounds, and each one formed of plastic-coated cardboard at 550 degrees. In an endless march, these cartons pass, bringing milk from fine dairy herds right to your door. These cartons are the most modern milk cartons in the world, sealed under heat, plastic lined, no wax to drip from them, and they never leak. From the bottling machine, they go to the conveyor belt, 
each one filled with Rosedale's quality check grade A milk or cream or half and half or whipping cream. From the conveyor belt, they're placed in wire baskets ready for Rosedale's refrigerated trucks, ready to be left at your door by your Rosedale dairy root man. These Eskimo pies are headed for Kansas City. Rosedale Dairy is the home of quality check dairy products in Fort Dodge and Northwest Iowa. The president of the Fort Dodge Laboratories is D.A. Peterson. The company is the largest exclusive producer of veterinary products in the world. This is the biological farm where vaccines and serums of animal origin have their beginning. It has a large and constant population of all kinds of animals. These goats are part of the population. They're brought from southern Missouri and Arkansas and are used in the production of rabies vaccine. They are inoculated with the virus of rabies and become victims of the disease. They are sacrificed that people and other animals may live. Most of the animals used for the production of vaccines and serums are bled at regular intervals. But rabies vaccine is made from the tissues of the goat. These essential tissues are placed in sterile jars and go to the company's laboratories for further processing. Fort Dodge products are sold in 60 countries. The company has distributors in Venezuela, Mexico, Cuba, Canada, Thailand, Portugal, and then it also has several in South Africa. Laboratory horses live the lives of country gentlemen. They have fine quarters and nothing to do. Horses' blood is used to make many products, serums used for swine erysipelas and for animal tetanus antitoxin. Don Dono is the superintendent here. The horse's neck is shaved and blood is taken from the vein. These horses are in excellent health and receive the best of care. Cats, too, are used in the manufacture of serums. As you can see, they're well cared for and are sleek and healthy. They enjoy every luxury. Dr. Ludwig Sender and Dr. Harlan Engelbrecht are among the men responsible for the scientific work done on this remarkable farm. Here's the finest doghouse in the world. Hundreds of dogs live out long lives of ease in this doghouse. They're big dogs. They run in these pens during the day and occupy the doghouse at night. Their blood is used to make distemper serum. Joe Hickey and Don Clark are two of the technicians. The dogs become accustomed to their regular visits to the laboratory. In the downtown laboratory, serums and vaccines are refined and packaged. In this operation, you see Irene Harrison, Mildred Sturdivant, Maxine Spees, Bernice Stringer, Olive Hansen, Maureen Carlson, Grace Hogan, Irene Newman, and Ida Mae Julian. MLV, the discovery of this company, was the first modified live virus hog cholera vaccine. In this packaging operation over in another laboratory, Lucille McMinimant, Evelyn Brooks, and Betty Lou Aiden are using an automatic filling device which always delivers the exact amount required. This vacuum chamber operates at temperatures down to 76 degrees below zero. These units are used to dehydrate serums and vaccine. In the freeze drying units, all moisture is removed from the material under vacuum. The powder that is left may be kept indefinitely. The veterinarian merely adds sterile water to restore its liquid form. The men in charge of this important laboratory operation are Ed Riley and Fletcher Moore. Here they are checking the complex recording machines and meters which regulate the dehydrating chambers. To every part of the world, the veterinary products of the Fort Dodge Laboratories carry the Fort Dodge label. Fort Dodge, Manson, and many farms in several towns are serviced by the Fort Dodge District of the Iowa, Illinois Gas and Electric Company. This is the big service building at South 22nd Street. Like a ship store, the service building has everything. Gordon Stiles, the storekeeper, has checked out a transformer and Ralph Bowie is loading it with a lift truck. Out in the yard, a line crew is loading a pole for the Best Wall Gypsum Company southeast of Fort Dodge. In the crew are Arnie Green, Gail Bell, the foreman, Gary Junkman, Harry Knoll, Les Willis, Sam Weir, and Howard Corey. This is regular work for these men in all kinds of weather. On the thousands of miles of line the company serves, poles must be replaced, new ones added as the industry expands. But these men are careful. In 250,000 man hours, in the 
Fort Dodge district, there's been no accident. Gas is an important product furnished by the company. To see that you're not overcharged and your meter's working properly, every gas meter is brought in and checked at least every seven years. This is Dean Smith working on one. Now, electric meters receive the same treatment. They're tested every eight years. The men who work on them are Bernard Sweeney and Leighton Hansen, the man who reads your meter for the company whether it be gas or electric, knows that it has measured the amounts that you use correctly. Now here's the dispatcher's board. It shows where every switch is located in the Fort Dodge district. It shows all automatic reclosing devices, all generating and substations, all connections with other companies. Jane Fuller and Shirley Webb man this radio communication system. They talk to 19 trucks over a 40 mile radius. This radio station is in operation 24 hours every day. Arnold Bell, Louis Laughlin, and George Kramer assist in directing the work that keeps the power flowing. Here is Harold Gilbert, superintendent in charge of gas distribution. These meters and recorders measure the flow of gas to nearly 10,000 domestic and industrial users. John Meenan is the electric distribution superintendent for the district serving 14,515 customers. Harold Anderson is the supervisor of the service building and storeroom operations. The head man and manager of the Iowa, Illinois Gas and Electric Company in this district is Ray Kaufman, seen here in his office. Although this district is part of the Iowa power grid, the primary source of power where the Fort Dodge District is this generating plant on the Des Moines River, just south of Herring Viaduct. The inside of the generating plant is a beautiful thing. You're conscious of power in it as you're conscious of goodness in a church. Clyde Lund is the plant superintendent in charge of its activity, which are measured by a great variety of meters at various locations throughout the plant. The man reading these is George Schaffner, great steam boilers, drive turbines, turbines drive generators, voltages, watts, amperes, and cycles. They're all measured and regulated through the use of these meters. They take the pulse of that all-important current that keeps the town and country going. This great substation is one of the important parts of the electric grid in Iowa. Safety is a constant aim of the company, and this plaque is evidence of thousands upon thousands of accident-free hours. At 11th and 1st Avenue North, the Fort Dodge District has its office where the general commercial activities are carried on. Here it handles stoves, washers, dryers, refrigerators, freezers, and water heaters. This is Fort Dodge, was produced by KQTV Channel 21, NBC TV, for Northwest and North Central Iowa. The film work, editing, was done by Stanley McCurdy. We hope that you've enjoyed this visit. Thank you for being with us.